joining us today for our Bible study. As you are aware, we continue to operate in a very difficult and challenging time. There are circumstances that the church has never seen before, and we have to be working much harder to ensure that the people of God are cared for. The Lord Jesus Christ, when he recommissioned Peter, he gave him the instruction. He says, feed my lamb. And then he said to him, shepherd the sheep. The question for our consideration today is what kind of leadership should the church community expect from its leaders, especially in difficult, uncertain, and challenging times? We're going to explore this question today, and we are inviting you to get your Bibles. Uh, foundation to this passage is Acts chapter 17, from verse 1 to verse 10. And we're going to be studying 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 from verse 1 through verse 19. Get your Bibles and join us today as we engage in our study. Before we start the study, however, we have our brethren who are going to sing us a song. I trust that it will be a blessing to you. Thank you. Why should I feel discouraged and why should the shadows come why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion my constant friend is he. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I. And 
I know He watches me, and I know He watches me. Thank you, folks, for that beautiful reminder that the eyes of the Lord is on the sparrows and we can rest assured that he watches each and every one of us. So today I have with me uh, my brother Steve who is to my left and sister Lorraine who is back with me today as we reflect upon this subject matter. The subject matter again, what kind of leadership should our church community expect from its leaders, especially in difficult, uncertain, and trying times? Well, we are going to be exploring, as I indicated earlier, the passage that is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. The background to the formation of the Thessalonian church is interesting. The book of Acts chapter 17 records that after Paul and Silas came from Philippi. Remember what happened to them in chapter 16 of the book of Acts, that they were imprisoned and how the Lord delivered them from prison, that they came into Thessalonica. When they got into Thessalonica, they met and established a church community in Jason's house. While they were there, we are told that persecution arose and the the Jews and some of the Gentiles who were there became hostile to Jason for accommodating um, the missionaries who had come, the apostles. And we are told that after of about three weeks of developing this fledging church that Paul and his apostles had to leave the community. And so that leaves us now with what happened in the book of Thessalonica as Paul wrote to them. And so today, we are going to read for you um, the passage that is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, from verse 1 through to verse 19. Brother Steve is going to start and followed by Sister Laurie. So the word of the Lord comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 9. And it says, You know, brothers, that our visit to you was not a failure. We had previously suffered and been insulted in Philippi, as you know, but with the help of God, we dare to tell you his gospel in spite of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel and are not trying to please men but God who tests our heart. You know we never use flattery nor did we put, our ma put on masks to cover, our greed, or cover up greed. God is our witness. We are not looking for praise from men not from you or anyone else. As apostles of Christ, we could have been a burden to you, but we were gentle among you, like a mother caring for her little children. We love, we love you so much that you were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become a so dear to us. Verse 9, Surely you remember, brothers, our toil and, and hard work. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. Continuing. <coughs> Verse 10, You are witnesses, and so is God, of our holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continually because 
when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. For you, brothers, became imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. You suffered from your own countrymen the same things those churches suffered from the Jews who killed the Lord Jesus and the prophets and also drove us out. They displeased God and are hostile to all men in their efforts to keep us from speaking to the Gentiles so they may be saved. In this way, they also heap up their sins to the limit. The wrath of God has come upon them at last. But brothers, when we were torn away from you for a short time, in person, not in thought, out of our intense longing, we made every effort to see you. For we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, did again and again, but Satan stopped us. For what is our hope, or joy, or crown in which we hope? I'll do that again. For what is our joy, or hope, or crown, in which we will glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes? Is it not you? Indeed, you are our glory and joy. The reading of the word. Thank you very much, Brother Steve and Sister Lorraine, for reading this passage for us. So one of the things that we see from this passage is that after a little while, the leadership, the apostles, were separated from this faith community. Um, it was a very fledging church. It was very, 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 very young in its establishment. But the leadership modeled some things for us, which I think that in all churches, these should be part of the leadership structure. The leadership should ensure that the qualities that were displayed here through the life and work of the ministers, the apostles, should become part of them. So the church was separated. They had to be from a distance. I think the language that we're now using is remote, right? Um, persons have to be to be to be pastoring now, extending pastoral service, not from the regular hands-on approach that we are generally accustomed to but we now have to make adjustments accordingly. What then are some of the, 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 the approaches that the apostles use that we would commend to the church community, to its leaders at this time? Let's look at their motive. Um, Brother Steve, you read the first nine verses. Speak to us about what you observe in terms of the motive of the leadership of the church. First of all, he, he made mention that in spite of the difficulties that they were experiencing, in spite of the fact that there was opposition, they tried to maintain contact with the, the, the church yes. in that area. And, and that's the important thing, that we need to keep contact, in contact with those persons around us. Yes. Show genuine care and concern. Yes. And to be examples of of the the, the believers, yeah. and one of the things I think that that stood out for me, he says, he spent time in the word, he knew the word, and applied that word to how they they would um the the word the verse I think says, well before that he says in verse four, on the contrary we speak as men approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. So you are make, establishing the fact that you you're grounding whatever you're doing and saying on the word of God. Yes. And he says, we are not trying to please men, yes. but God, yes. who tests our heart. So yeah. at the end of the day, it is God who knows the intent of our heart. Yes. And he's saying, he, he makes sure the focus is on, first of all, doing things with pure motives. Yes. So, 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 so they, 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 they are acknowledging that once you are in church leadership, you should recognize that you're accountable to God. It yep. doesn't mean that other leaders in the body and the leadership team are not important, but we must understand that it is to God that our first priority must lie, and therefore we should resist every temptation to be engaged in any deception um, as we seek to lead God's people. He, he made mention, Lorraine, about greed. 
and, and, and speaks to the fact that they, they did not allow greed to, 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 to manipulate the way they, they address church and church community. Uh, what's your thought on that? So, <clears throat> indeed it was so because one of the things that he said, while they were among the people, they were not looking to the people for, to support so, them. Yes. Instead, they were actively engaged in activities that would be able to support them and it, by extension, the ministry. Yes. So, you know, there's no way the persons could have even thought yes. that um, they were in it for the money. Yes. So to speak. Yes. Because they were sufficient self-sufficient in what they do and were not really dependent yes. upon the people at the time yeah. to, you know, for their daily sustenance. Yeah. You get the impression, food. sorry, you get the impression that they, uh, it, it's not like they did it scripting me. So, you're, so you're, you're trying to say that I am not doing this for the money. Yes. Right. But they were amongst the people, they were a part of them and they participated in what activity the, the people were involved in, but also that they did it to sustain themselves. Yes. So they will not be dependent yes. on the people to provide for them. Yes, yes. yes. So, so in this situation, it, it would be a great value to every church community if the leaders could be self-sufficient um, so that the, the, the pressure is removed from the community. And, and the beauty about it, you know, when we think about it, is that these were house churches. <laughs> these were house churches. These were just a few persons who were there and perhaps had limited resources to so we want to commend the apostles and their leadership for ensuring that they were not there primarily for the purpose of acquiring material possessions um, and which would lead them to be greedy in, in their approach to, to the work. So we are saying that in difficult times, in difficult circumstances, we are to take our members' situations, financial and economic situation, into consideration before we make demands on them. I, I like that. I really do like that. Yeah. And in, both, in, in, in the passage, both in the one that Sister Lauren read and, and the one I have, yes. um, for instance, verse 7 says, But we were gentle among you, like, mo like a mother caring for her little children. Right. So they made the feel of a of, of family setting. Right. And we care for you not because of whatever the circumstance outside, right. but that we care that you you survive. Good. Yeah. So it shows that that sort of parenting, nurturing sort of right. relationship. Right. right. I, I really like that because that, that's what we want to talk about. What are the methods that we can use at this time to ensure that we are demonstrating the care? And, and he used the metaphor of a mother and a child. Mm -hmm. Right? And all of us know that it is it is the responsibility of parents to care for the children <laughs> that is important you know yes but for me interestingly he didn't only stop at um looking um identifying the, the role of the mother yes he also spoke to treating them as a father yes treats yes. the children yes so you get the sense that it was family yes Yes. So the father has a particular role. Yes. The mother has a particular role. Yes. So in executing, in carrying out their functions, in um, spreading the gospel, in establishing the church, yes. they really operated like family. Yes. And ideally, families would want to treat others well. Yes. You would care, as Brother Steve said, yes. you love. It's sharing your lives. Yes. Imagine living in a household. Yes. So, you know, it's really a total involvement. Yes. It's putting in, pouring in of yourself. You know, being the parent, mother, father, being mm -hmm. a part of. Yeah. As far as you say that, Laurie, sorry Steve, three things he, he spoke of as it relates to father. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. he, he spoke of three things. Can, can we right. emphasize those three things? He, he talks about comforting. Right. Encouraging, yes. encouraging and urging them, uh, to pushing lives. them to live lives that right. are worthy, worthy of, of God. God. Right. To hold them accountable. Yes. Yeah. Stay, stay with me a little bit. Comfort. Comfort. Um, it means that people are hurting. It means people are having emotional pain. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, what are some of the things now that we have to do to go beyond the call of duty to ensure that our, 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 our membership are, are comforted in these times? Um, 
one of the things that I think the very word Paul used is a follow up to comfort. Yes. Because he also spoke about encouragement. Yes. And uh, we sometimes people don't even express how they feel. Yes. But it is when you make the initial move. Yes. That calling, that asking, that you know, inquiring, how are you? How are things? Then you you know, you will sort of elicit. Yes. The feedback yes. and get to understand how people are dealing with the whole crisis, everything that is happening now. So it also means reaching out, mm-hmm. probably more than yes. you would normally have done. Yes. You know, that extra push, that extra effort to main, maintain contact, yes. to, you know, let people know that they're still cared for. Remember later on, Paul would have said that I think about, I'm, I'm physically absent, but I still think about you yes. daily. So yes. I was absent physically, but spiritually, yes. my thoughts were with you. Yes. You know, I, you're, you're ever present in my mind. So those ideas and it have to be communicated so people understand that the fact that for example we are not able to gather as we usually would yes does not mean out of sight does not mean out of mind right wonderful but you are still cared for and how can we you know be of help to you so sometimes like i would say earlier we don't express you know sometimes pride yes but by talking you know and i want to say that if I may, yeah. that <clears throat> we see Paul doing so, but in church life you have a number of leaders, right? So it might not necessarily be the one chief leader calling or making contact. Yes. But it's it's a whole community, it's yes. a whole participation, teamwork, yes. that sort of thing. So each one mm-hmm. You know, make that contact. Yes. And so you get a whole spread. Better coverage, maybe. Keep in mind that we are in a tourist related environment. Yes. So Montague Bay and areas around it, a lot of persons depend on the tourist dollar to, to carry them through their daily activities. Mm-hmm. As of the twenty second of March the tourism entity as we knew it started shedding and people, whether it be indirectly or directly, lost their jobs. Yes. And so even the little that they might have saved up five weeks on would mean that persons are now going to be looking around. Yes. How can we as a body, knowing yes. that this, you know your, your, your church environment, you know who is in tourist related entities yeah. how do we as the church of god yeah. reach out to those persons mm-hmm. it might not necessarily be funds but you have a ch- an additional chicken you have a this you have a that you you try to use those things to help one another yes and not just for those persons who are of the church yes but persons who are in your community because that is how we show brotherly love right. and that is what paul was trying to point out here yes mm-hmm. yes so, so, so some parents are overwhelmed <laughs> with the responsibility of taking care of the children at home right now. They have to be teaching them and some of them don't know the math or how to put the language, etc., etc. What can we do as a church community to ensure that parents you know, can get help from us? These are things that I think we can do in practical ways that will bring encouragement to, 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 to the brethren and to folks in our respective communities. Yes, thank you very much. We really appreciate you know, these methods, this approach. And again, foundation to it is treat each person as family. Care for one another. Ensure that we are encouraging others. It, the last of jobs, last of opportunities, all of that people are going through difficult times. We need to ensure that we do everything, everything possible to encourage them. And then the final thing that we want to consider, we, we've looked at their motive, we've looked at their method, we want to talk a little bit about their message. What it is that he was saying, they receive the word of God, not from men, but as the genuine word of God. So in difficult times, they articulated a message. Brother Steve, what, what was the message that you sent that they were articulating here to, 
to, to the church community? The word has to be... All right, let me go back a little bit to what I said earlier on. Being examples. Yes. We have to not just talk the word, but we have to be examples in the word. Yes. So, in everything I see Paul is talking about here, he's saying... I must live my life in such a way that those who are going through the challenges that they're going through now yes. can pattern off my, my, the way I am living to say this is how I must face these circumstances. He spoke about being an encourager. Yes. He spoke about a form of comforting. Yes. He spoke about pushing, prodding, and we probably didn't deal with that earlier on. There are times that we're going to be caught in a situation we're not sure how to handle it. And he's the one that he's, he's saying that as people are closer to the situation, yes. be there to, to push and prod and encourage them to move on. Sometimes people realizing that I don't have a job. Yes. So what else can I do to earn a living? I must be one of those looking out for them. What skills do I have? Yes. What skills does that person have? And then help show them yes. that this might be a way of you. You are, you are good at this. You are good at this. You spoke, spoke a while ago about um, persons who, for instance, don't know the math yes. and they are now going to be considered as teachers at home. Mm -hmm. So maybe the parent that is there don't necessarily know how to articulate or even the, the content of the study. Yeah. But you, as a friend, here in this situation, go out there and help. Yes. Yeah, and that's an important thing, that we model Christ in everything that we do. Yes. So, Lorraine, these are usually difficult and trying times. Paul seems to tell them that, yes, these persecutions will come, mm -hmm. but are they alone? <laughs> Shall I that this? What, what did he say? Yes. <clears throat> well, certainly they are not alone. Yes. Because Paul <clears throat> would have mentioned, even prior to chapter 2, yes. that he constantly prays for them. Yes. And uh, he acknowledged too that they were faithful people. Yes. So, you know, they trusted God. Yes. They had faith. Yes. And uh, supported by his prayers, his constant um, pleading on their behalf. Right. Made pleading on their behalf, yes. intercession. Yes. On their behalf. And so we can't neglect that aspect right. of the life as well. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, truly, truly, this is a very inspiring passage for all of us. It's very insightful and, and very instructive that we recognize, yes, that there are times when we will go through difficult and trying situations, but as leaders, our input can make a difference in how persons um, truly navigate these difficult and trying times. The example of the apostles before us today is what we have looked at. And in the example that they have demonstrated to us, they made sure that their motives were pure, morally pure. No deception, no flattery, no greed. They were genuine. They used the method of accepting every member of community as family, both as little children, as parents, and they ensured that they not only took care of their physical need, but they took care of their spiritual and emotional needs. You know, this is important. We must treat people as whole, uh, and therefore we need to be holistic in the way we minister to them. I was encouraged by the message that yes, though you're going through difficult times, remember that the Lord is with you. You're not alone. The Lord is going to strengthen you. And those, especially persons are persecuting you, you should rest assured that the Lord will take vengeance upon them. Do not dwell on that vengeance. Do not make effort to, to, to be angry about the, the external issues that are there. As believers, we are to trust the Lord. We are to present our cases before him and trust him to do that. So today I encourage all the leaders. I know it is very demanding. But I want to thank you for taking the role of leaders within the body of Christ. And I want to trust that today, this study would have helped you somewhat to understand that as we get into leadership, our motive must be pure, our methods must be godly, and our message must be Christ-centered each and every day. I want to thank you for sharing with us today, and I look forward to joining you next week 
when we come again with another interesting Bible study. May the Lord be with you. May he strengthen you as you continue to lead and as you continue to receive leadership in this time of trial and tribulation. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.